Do you want to know the complete roadmap on how to get good at LeetCode and where to even begin? If so, then in this video specifically, I'm going to teach you how to go from an absolute beginner who know nothing about algorithm data structure to someone who know exactly how to solve any medium legal problem and some hard problem without looking at a solution. So if this sounds like something that you're interested, please continue watching. Just a little bit more about myself. My name is Eric, and I'm currently working as a software engineer at Microsoft. In the past one year, I studied Lee code for about five to eight months, and I did over 300 Lee code questions and completed many big tech interviews. So in this video specifically, I concluded a study plan that I'm going to share with you today. So in terms of the roadmap and the learning plan for how to study and where to even begin, on my channel, I created a section called Lee code section. Now this this is mostly for people who know exactly where to work on, then they can just go to any playlist, for example, link list. If they want to improve on uh, LeetCode link list questions, then they can just go to this playlist and you can see there's a number, then they can just basically progress from there, right? For example, if I know nothing about LeetCode link list, then I can basically start with the first one and I work my way up all the way to the hardest question, right, on link list. Now, these are not the hardest question, but it requires you to have the fundamental understanding about how to use link list. But you can see that I also create a another sections um, and you can see I created a, a couple sections which is mostly about LeetCode learning phases. Now this is very very important rather than doing LeetCode questions randomly for example I do a array question then I do a sliding window question then I do a dynamic programming question this is not how you should uh, learn very effectively. The best way to learn effectively is to do questions that are around the similar coding patterns. Now what I mean by coding patterns for example let's say if you're trying to do or improve your link list problem, then you should solve questions that are related to linked list, right? If you're not good at how to solve LeetCode two-pointer problem, then you should solve questions that are related to two-pointers and also other code interview patterns that are related to two-pointers. For example, sliding window, binary search, fast and slow pointers, they're all variation of two-pointers, right? Because for sliding window, you have a window that is either a fixed size window or a window size that changes. So if we look at the two-pointer problem, this is the most important one. And here you can see here we have some easy questions. Now, this is where I recommend you to begin because two pointers is very easy and this is something that you can begin. And if you're running out of time, I would definitely just do the first five to six questions. This will basically give you a really good understanding about two pointers. Then you should focus a bit more on moving on to the next one, which is sliding window. Now, sliding window is kind of hard, but I think that it really requires you to have a really good fundamental of two pointers, right? Which is the previous playlist. And here you can see in the sliding window playlist, we have a couple questions, right? Especially the longest substring of something, right? If it started with longest substring, if you have a really good understanding about that, then this will be a really good. Now for sliding window, like I said, mentioned earlier, there is a fixed size window. For example, the window size is fixed. For example, minimum size subarray, where the size of the window is fixed and you're basically sliding the window from left to right to get the answer. But there's also a different, another kind of sliding window type of problem where the window size is always changing, right? You're basically either expand the window or also contracting the window to find the answer. And these are some of the questions that are related to that. Uh, after you do sliding window, I will definitely recommend you to do binary search. Now, binary search is also a variation of two pointers because we have a left pointer and we have a right pointer. And the goal for that is to find the target value. Now, binary search is a little different because it requires you to understand the three different variation of how to use binary search. Now, let me show you a resource that you can use. For example, this one right here, which is under the LeetCode Explore section and under the binary search, there are three template of binary search. One way is the most traditional way where we saw this is the basic binary search where you have the left and the right. So if left is greater than right, then basically the condition breaks. But the downfall of this is that there's no post-processing, which means that after the condition breaks, then there is no way that we have left is equal to right because we didn't get the answer, right? We don't know the targets. We cannot be able to process the target after the condition breaks. And the other template is something like this, where if left is less than right, then we basically continue to do our binary search. Now, the good thing about this is that you can be able to do post-processing, for example, the only con condition when the while loop breaks is when the left is equal to right.
right. So if left is equal to right, then you can be able to do some post-processing where left is actually equal to right after the while loop. And you can be able to say something like this, right? You can do some post-processing. You can process, you can use the target that you find even after after you completed the while loop. And the other template is something like this. Now, by, all, by far, this is my favorite template for using binary search because in this case, you can see I can have my left and I can also have my right. So basically, you can see we're still getting doing our binary search, right? We have left plus one is less than right. We continue to, uh, you know, do our binary search. But the condition breaks only if left plus one is equal to right, right? So if that's the case, then what I can do is I can do some post processing. So after the while loop breaks, I can either check to see if left and is the answer or the right is the answer. Now you might think that this is overkill because we could just do a, a you know template one version and we don't have to do any post processing. But the purpose of post processing is very important because if you do those questions, you will definitely realize that I need to do some post processing to be able to figure out the solution, right? Or be able to compare, you know, which one is the right answer, right? Sometimes we're even not even sure if the left pointer is pointing to the right answer or the right pointer is pointing to the right answer. So in that case, this two, those two solutions will be very, very useful. Now, moving on to other pattern in this case is the fast and slow pointer. Now, fast and slow pointer, this is very, very important because um, it requires you to understand a bit more about using linked lists. As you can see, fast and slow pointer mostly is using linked lists, but I feel like this pattern, if you're running out of time, you don't have to really take a look at about it, or you can just forget about it if you are running out of time. Now, moving on to phase two, we have the linked list or binary tree or tree type of problems. So you can see here, we start by using linked list. Now, the reason why I suggest to start with linked list because linked list is just a list node where each list node has a pointer that points to the next node. But binary tree is a little different, but is very similar is that each node has two pointers, right? A right node and also a left node. So binary tree is also a little advanced to that because binary tree, you kind of have like a number of nodes, right? Where each node can point to a number of nodes. So you can see here, this is basically the best way to begin, right? So like I mentioned earlier, so always follow the order that I provide you. Um, and here you can see link list is very, very important. So it basically gives you from the beginner version, right? So this is the link, um, a link list easy version of link list. And then you can basically work your way all the way to the last one. And if you're running out of time, again, just do the first five questions, it should be fine. Now, in terms of the link list traversal, reversal, I think this is very important as well to be able to understand how to reverse a link list, but not only that, how to be able to do questions that are related to reverse link list. For example, reverse nodes in K group. I think th those three questions is really, really important. And the other one is the binary tree. Now the binary tree problem, I actually have a lot of them. Now, the reason why is because there are three ways to traverse the tree. One way is to use pre-order traversal and the other one is in-order traversal. And the other one is post-order traversal. Now, and you can see here, I also even made a video talk about breadth first search. Now breadth first search is also another pattern or another way to traverse binary tree because you can be able to traverse level by level. Whereas pre-order, in-order, post-order, we're basically traversing binary tree in a depth first manner. And then after you learn about those four basic ways and do a problem with it, right? Learn about how to solve it in using iteratively and recursively, then maybe you can sh should do some other questions that are related to binary tree. So I do have some of them that basically covers the uh, breadth first search binary tree traversal and also a depth first search binary tree traversal. I find that these problems are very, very interesting and very, very important to do. Now, if you're running out of time, I won't recommend to do too many of them, but I still recommend that you should should do some of them. So after you do the binary tree, um, my next suggestion is a binary search tree. Now binary search tree is very similar to binary tree. So I would say that maybe just focus on, you know, learn about how to use in order traversal, right? And learn about how to use depth first search to traverse the binary search tree and how this binary search tree works. Then I think that's about it. And moving on, the last part is to learn about binary tree. Now try is basically a binary tree. So I would suggest that to do binary tree and also try, and they will give, basically give you a really good understanding about binary tree. Now I would definitely say that binary tree and try it, they are also very important, but you don't have to do a lot of them. I think if you have a, like a really good understanding about how try and binary tree works, then it should be fine. And that's why you can see that I didn't do a lot of questions on try and binary tree. And the second, uh, I should say the third phase is learning about 
sorting. Now, these are the playlists that I would recommend learning about intervals, learning about top K elements and learn about two heaps. So intervals is kind of like a, a 2D array where each subarray has only two elements where it has a start time and the end time. And your goal is to solve problems using this kind of similar style. And if you look at intervals here, you can see we have some problems, right? So the medium room problem is the most classic one. But if you find this problem very, very hard, and it also requires premium on Leetcode, then I will definitely solve these three questions or really give you a really good understanding about how interval works. Then I will recommend you to learn about top K element, which requires you to you know learn about how to use sorting algorithms and how you can be able to use priority queue to solve problems. And this is also very, very important. Then depends on the timing. If you're running out of time, then I won't recommend you to go into two heaps because this kind of questions are kind of rare being asked in interview, in my opinion, but it basically tests your knowledge on how to use two priority queue to solve a problem where we have a min heap and also a max heap. And we are basically trying to find the median or trying to find the middle value or something like that. So if you're not running out of time, give it a try. If you're not, then you can just forget it. Now, phase four is mostly about breadth first search and depth first search in graph. Now, here you can see I started by basically doing some questions related to search. Now, in terms of search, you can see some questions. I mostly cover them in breadth first search. Some of them are covered in depth first search and some of them are in both. So for this kind of questions, I won't recommend to do many of them, but in a way where you are very comfortable about solving a problem using a depth first search and breadth first search. But if you're running out of time, I will definitely just try to solve the most important questions. Now, moving on after you done with the search problems i will definitely spend some time learning about backtracking now backtracking is also very very important they're mostly related to depth first search but also requires you to have a really good understanding about depth first search about how to use recursion to solve problems and here you can see i did a number of them and i definitely highly recommend to start with the order that i provided here i also don't think that you should go too much into it but if you do have time i would definitely follow the entire playlist because if you follow the entire playlist, I guarantee you that you should have a really solid understanding about backtracking up to the Sudoku solver and the end queens, because those two questions really test your knowledge on do you, are you able to solve backtracking problems? And because I was able to follow these numbers of coding questions, and I was able to solve Sudoku solver and end queens problem without looking at a solution. And of course, there are also some advanced problems, for example, word search, uh, word search number two, robot cl room cleaner, which is also one of the most popular questions on Amazon. So I find that these questions are kind of like, you know, just practice. So after you did the backtracking, there's another section which is called Union Fund. Union Fund, I don't find that to be very, very popular, but I think that if you do have some basic understanding about how to implement a Union Fund class, then this will be enough. And then lastly, I think there's something that I also want to talk about, which I also spend a lot of time learning, which is dynamic programming. Now, dynamic programming is very, very tough. It's probably the hardest coding interview pattern that you will ever encounter. So to start, I will highly recommend you to start with this thing way. And the first question that I had in that playlist is called the knapsack problem. And the knapsack problem really give you a solid understanding about how to solve a dynamic program problem from a worst case scenario, which is two to the power of n time complexity, optimize it down to a top down approach, which is somewhat like n square time complexity, and then also optimize it down to a bottom up approach and eventually work your way up to solve the problem using a single array, which optimize the space complexity down to a linear from an n square. And I also have some problems here as well. So if you don't, if you're unable to get through the knapsack problem, then I'll definitely hi highly recommend to try some easy ones. For example, the climbing stairs, unique path, unique path two, and so on and so forth. So these questions, I will say these are also very helpful. And if you follow the number that I provide you, again, this will basically um, help you to um, be able to give you a really good understanding about how to work with dynamic programming questions. Now, moving on, if you have time, then I would definitely try it with other playlists, for example, DP subsequences and minimum maximum path. Now, if you don't have time, then I'll definitely recommend you to just focus on those two playlists, DP subsequence and DP distinct ways. And after you solve those or after you have a better understanding about those two coding interview patterns, then you should be a good understanding about dynamic programming questions. Now, if you still have time, then I would definitely also recommend you to try out phase six. Now, phase six is a very interesting one because here you can see I basically 
basically covers the most important data structures that we're going to use throughout the entire phases. And I didn't put them in the phase one because if you look at array, uh, Leetcode array, most of the questions are very generic. For example, like it is array questions, but some of them are using hash tables. Some of them are using, for example, two pointers or uh, for example, Sudoku solver, uh, which is related to backtracking, jump game, which is related to DP, trapping the water is related to two pointers, uh, cons uh, combination sum, which is related to, you know, backtracking as well, right? So you can see we have variations of, you know, coding few patterns in the array section. So it's very hard to, you know, study them first. So that's why I put them last, right? Same thing as string and stack, but it's also very important because it really, you know, make sure that you have the skills, right? You have the understanding about how to traverse array, right? How to traverse in a 2D array, for example, how do you traverse in the list, right? How do you, for example, something like a zigzag traversal, how do you traverse the array, 2D array in a zigzag version, right? Spiral matrix number one and spiral matrix number two. Um, and also there's also like different uh, questions related to array, which is great to, you know, learn them as well. Um, and in string, it really focus on, do you know how to use the built-in methods inside a string? For example, string dot compare to, right? That's one of them. And the other one is, do you know how to sort a string, right? Do you know how to sort it based on a certain condition? Do you know how to write a comparator function when you sort the function, right? So for example, it doesn't really require you to learn about, you know, like things like um, merge sort or quick sort. You're not going to use that. But for example, if you're going to sort using the comparator, then you be definitely want to know how to use it, right? For example, this question specifically. And also there's like different kind of questions, like how can you be able to use a string? For example, prefix, can you be able to um, use the prefix function to compare different string, right? So that's something very important as well. Um, the other one is like stacking queue. I think stacking queue, this basically teaches you the basics. Like, do you understand how to use a stack? Do you understand how to use a queue? But up to here, introduce a new concept, something called DQ, which basically uh, is a data structure that has all the features that stack and queue has, right? So you can be able to insert at the, um, at the end and you can also be able to insert at the front. Um, and then you can see I did some questions here as well. For example, we also have like basic calc uh, daily temperatures, which is using something called monolith uh, stack, which basically means that the stack must be either increasing order or decreasing order, right? And uh, for example, that's greater elements, basic calculator using stack and recursion and so on and so forth, right? And uh, I also just briefly talked about hash tables, some question about it, like for example, two sum or the subarray sum equals K, right? So some some uh, questions that are related to hash tables. But of course, we I think I already using a lot of hash table throughout these phases as well. And lastly, I also have like design questions. Now design questions, I try to keep it more uh, focused on the most important ones that you can actually be able to learn something. For example, the LRU cache, which I find that to be very, very interesting. Uh, there are different ways to solve this problem. And I basically conclude that problem with by telling you what are some ways to you know solve it. And one of the hard questions is like the LFU cache. Now this one, I also talk about there's some ways. And the reason why this playlist is very important because now you learn all the phases, right? Now you cover, now we cover all the coding interview patterns that you need to know. And now it's to, for you to identify which data structure, which algorithm should you solve this problem, right? Because uh, design questions really open-ended. So if you don't have the experience for all these kind of data structures, it's really hard for you to generate a solution, right? For example, if you don't know how to use doubly linked list, then there's no way for you to solve the, you know, LRU cache in a different approach, right? Now, of course, there's different ways to solve LRU cache, but there's a pros and cons for each solution. And you got to know these ways to solve the problem. So all in all, as you can see, this is basically a overview of everything that I covered throughout the past one year. After you finish all this, you should have a really good understanding about how to solve any legal question. Maybe you cannot be able to solve the problem, but you should be able to have a really clear um, understanding about what kind of coding pattern this question is, which coding interview pattern should you use to solve the problem. And of course, another recommendation after this is to do some mock interview. I think, you know, especially if you want to get good at coding interview, I think communication is also a very, very big, big part. And the other part is to just learn more about, you know, algorithms and data structures. I feel like I also cover a lot of them here. For example, tries how to implement the prefix tree, DQ, um, how to use union find, Dijkstra, topological sort. So these are also very, very important stuff as well. So as you can see, this is basically like a roadmap that I worked on for the past one year to help you, to help anybody, even myself in the future, if I want to prepare for a code interview, I can can always come back to this roadmap that I designed. So all in all, I think that this is very, very important and I hope that you find this very helpful.